Hey everybody, uh, welcome back this week. I apologize for missing last week. I guess I put up a video the week before I didn't. It's been a, uh, a busy couple of weeks. Um, I'm just gonna give you a couple updates on, on what I've been up to and then a uh, quick little shots around the uh, shop. A few of the projects I'm working on, things to look forward to in the next couple of months. Um, the exciting things are still going on, but um, I had a little detour. Um, the last couple of weeks on life. Um, so what are we at now? I think it, today's like the 10th of July. Um, so last week would have been the 3rd of July. So the last week of June, two weeks ago today, um, Tuesday morning, we, uh, I, I, I'm put one of my little side projects I do is I work with uh, Atlantis Adapt out here in Denver, Colorado. Um, this is where the disability uh, rights movement really got going. Um, it's kind of a competition between Berkeley and Denver on where it all got started. First independent living center was out in Berkeley, second one was here in Denver. Uh, but the civil disobedience kind of was also going on in both places at the same time. And uh, we celebrated 39 years since a uh, big bus block in Denver, Colorado in uh, 1978, June 5th of 1978. Uh, 19 people laid down on the ground and blocked buses demanding the right to ride. Um, that was finally realized in 1990 with the Americans with Disabilities Act nationwide. Well, in theory, that was recognized. It's taken a lot of years to actually get public transit working in a lot of places. But our fight wasn't around public transportation this time. It was around Medicaid. So last Tuesday morning, a group of nine people from Atlantis Adapt entered the offices of Senator Cory Gardner here in Denver and uh, proceeded to hold those offices for 57 hours um, of, of a sit-in. Uh, I was not one of those people inside. I was on the outside because I had to run out to eastern Colorado to a little town called Yuma where Cory Gardner's from on Wednesday of that week. So I was working it from the outside. Uh, I spent the morning on Wednesday down outside of the offices doing media and stuff and then ran out to Yuma. Thursday I was back at the offices. Just before I left Thursday evening, the uh, cops rolled in, arrested everybody. Um, luckily, a few people were able to sit down at the jail for the uh, 32 hours it took to get them out. I came home, got off my skin for a little bit, went back Friday morning. Long story short, it, it was ridiculous getting them out of jail. Mm -hmm. They should have been ticketed and released there at the, the scene of the crime. Uh, it was simple trespass charges, but they weren't. So I'll put some links down below to, to some stuff. Yeah, basically, the Facebook for Atlantis Adapt is the best place for all the news stories. Um, we made the, the cover of the Denver Post. We were on every news station. We did a live shot Friday night from the jail. It was uh, quite the, uh, the roller coaster ride for that week. Moving on to last week, um, last week's video was a video actually of Kaylin uh, from Wheelchair Sports Camp who was upstairs in that office. She was one of the nine. Um, when we were driving back from Yuma, we were listening to the live feed on Facebook and she gave us a shout out because it was basically um, this live this sit in uh, live video on Facebook brought to you by Cripple Concepts Chargers because we had chargers on all the power shares up there running people's phones so they could continue to do Facebook Live almost 24 hours a day. So it was a nice shout out just randomly from her that we heard while we were driving back from Yuma. So I asked her if I could use that little clip as a, a commercial for Cripple Concepts. So, um, if you haven't seen that card up here in last week's video, um, you go check out Kaylin. Uh, she, she's a funny gal. So, uh, yeah, then last week, last Thursday, we did a big rally outside of Corey Gardner's office. Um, we had about 450 people, um, did a huge rally outside to save Medicaid. Um, really got some traction, and uh, this week, several of us are meeting uh, with Corey Gardner over the phone. So. Um, it's been a, been a whirlwind couple of weeks, but it's meant that I haven't been in the shop. I've been in meetings, I've been at protests, I, I've been, you know, I've been out of the shop. I think I've spent one day, maybe a day and a half out of the shop in the last two weeks. Um, this week's the first week I've actually been you know, out here a little bit on the weekend I got out of here. Uh, just kind of did some cleanup, catch up, figure out where I was. Um, so, so there hasn't been a lot of progress, but... Um, pumped out a bunch of chargers. I got a bunch of orders, um, I think, off of some of the Facebook Live stuff. 
So I shipped everything I had, got a bunch more built today. So there'll be a bunch more shipping out um, as orders come in. So we have them back in stock. If anybody's interested in charger, go to the website and uh, get yourself one, two or three, uh, give them to friends. So uh, yeah, that, that's kind of taking me away from the shop. But um, if I don't have Medicaid, and I've said this before in videos and I'll say it again, and, and it, it, yeah, this company doesn't exist without Medicaid. Without Medicaid, I don't get in and out of bed every day. I don't get showered. I don't go to the bathroom. I don't, I don't have a life. So um, I have to put everything on hold with this business to, to go and fight for Medicaid when Medicaid's under threat. So um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's unfortunate that that's part of my life, but um, I'm glad that I can be a part of, of that. And the fact that we have a senator in Colorado that could potentially be the deal breaker on it it means I have to do everything I can to, to keep it from getting ripped out from under us. Um, we live in a great state here in Colorado where I can buy into my Medicaid. We have a program for working adults with disabilities that allow us to buy into Medicaid. So I can actually earn money, buy into Medicaid, and still get the services I need. It's, it's taking a long time to get here and I don't want to see us slide backwards. So the fight continues, but um, luckily it seems to be mellowing out a little bit for now. Um, there'll be a couple days this week that I'm not in the shop and one day next week where I know for sure I won't be in the shop. But um, getting caught back up, getting on some other projects that I've been wanting to do for a while. Um, so I'm gonna take the, the camera off the tripod and uh, just do a quick little roll around the shop and highlight a few things that, that I'm working on. We'll start with the uh, dynamite lathe over here. Um, I've been working on it on and off. It's you know one of those when you just don't keep working on the same thing over and over. Uh, you know consistently, I have to keep like reminding myself where I was at. Uh, getting real close to punching out some knobs on that. I'm going to do a small run myself. Make sure I got everything dialed into what I want. Um, sell those knobs and uh, then probably work with the guy that I met through YouTube actually, um, who's got a machine shop in his garage back in Pennsylvania, and uh, he's he's got the capability to run a lot more a lot faster so uh, once I figure out exactly the design I want to go with on the knobs I'll get him to make me a run of aluminum ones and plastic ones um, and we'll get those back on the website uh, I'm actually doing a custom t-handle for a guy too um, that I met actually while I was doing the protesting um, who works for the city and he's looking for uh, something a little, little bit of an upgrade from what he has now so we're gonna work on that over the next couple of weeks and get that on his chair and I might start selling those um, or, or at least you know show what I did in case other people want a custom one made. Um, this has been a, a, a long work in progress. I still haven't got the spindle speed control on that. It has to be done. Um, cutting the plastic has been a little finicky but I think I finally got it down. Um, I did have an issue with, I run the ER40 collet on there and it takes a, it, it, well it can take over a hundred foot pounds of torque um and i'm maybe getting 30 um on my best day i'm getting 30 so i'm going to extend my uh, call it nut wrench so i can get a lot more leverage on it um, the plastic i've had trouble with it's pulling out or pushing in while i'm cutting so i think that'll really help give me a lot more torque i greased everything up and i still get a little bit of slippage occasionally so longer handle on the wrench is going to solve that problem so hopefully we'll get that um, spindle speed control done in the next couple of weeks too and this lathe will really be up and running and be able to just pump out a lot of a lot of parts off of it here's the little sakai lathe um, and i do still have this up on ebay i've had several people with some interest in it it's kind of a unique item it's a small lathe so somebody would have to want just a small lathe um, it's not, definitely not like major production or anything but uh, it's a nice little lathe. I'm going to miss it, uh, but the dynamite was a was an upgrade in every sense. Um, so I'm I'm not going to regret it when I sell this, but I am going to miss the little guy. I still use it occasionally, and I will up until it's sold. Probably still make a part here and a part there on it. It's just it's handy. It's easy. It's uh, really easy to operate from my wheelchair. So like I say, I will miss it, but I, I don't really need both of the lathes. So. This one's got to go. If you're interested, uh, hit me up and I'll send you to the eBay link. Um, it's it's been a nice little lathe, but it's it's time to really dedicate all my time and energy to the the dynamite and move up to something I can do a little more production on. The uh, the mill I haven't I feel bad I haven't touched the mill in a while. 
Um, I need to get cutting some parts on it. I, I that, that's the problem when I jump from machine to machine. I build a bunch of parts with one, then I build a bunch of parts with another, and then they sit for a while. But um, I've got a couple ideas of some things that I'm going to need that for real soon. So um, I, I think you'll you'll be seeing some parts pumping out of the mill again in the next few weeks as well. It's been a long time since I brought it up, but the uh, wheelchair skid steer project, it, it continues. Uh, this is the motorcycle engine here. Um, got into the shop and the air conditioning. I'm going to rebuild all four of the carburetors and replace the boots between the carbs and the engine itself. Um, they're all dry rotted pretty bad, so um, it, that's kind of a side project that I just keep working on as I have time. But I do want to get it going. I've got pretty much everything I need to make the thing run. So it's just a matter of putting the time in to make it actually run. That hopefully by the middle of August will be mounted on the skid steer and maybe even have the hydraulics all plumbed by then. Uh, but that project's not over. It will continue and you will see a wheelchair accessible skid steer at some point. Um, it's, it's not something that turns me a profit. So it's, it's the side project. I've been using the uh, router again. Um, I picked up some wood. Yeah, I didn't have enough tongue weight, if you notice in that picture. Uh, it was actually hard to get the trailer disconnected from the minivan. Uh, but I've been making some signs. I made this one for uh, my girlfriend's parents for uh, Father's Day. I made it. I just It was the first one I played with. All that wood that I bought is 11 and a half inch wide, three inch thick, and like 37 inches long. Um, and it's all pretty aged, so made for a neat sign. Um, I, I took a torch and burned the letters after I carved them out. Uh, I'm going to play around with polyurethaning them and you know, different ideas. Um, just a little, little something to do on the side. I think I can make some extra money selling some signs on Craigslist. Unfortunately, they're they're 20 pound slabs and they're big. So I looked into being able to ship them to to offer them for sale online, and they're just not worth it. So I am glad that I got the router up and running. Um, I'm going to throw a card up here to the quick change chuck I put on it, and now that I've used that a few times, it's it's well worth the investment. Um, it's so much easier for me to do than trying to use a, a wrench on the spindle and then a wrench on the collet nut and it, yeah it's just way way easier so um, I'll probably be doing some projects on here pretty soon and while we're talking about the router this is a laser and a laser driver that I'm gonna mount on the router so I can actually do some etching on anodized aluminum and wood and plastic um, again it's, it's kind of a side project we'll keep working on it but idea I've had for a while and I'm going to get that mounted up on the router so we can uh, actually try burning some wood and maybe some plastic maybe some uh, um, anodized aluminum we'll see if we can do anodized aluminum it's only a six watt laser it's a diode laser not a uh, co2 laser or anything so it's uh, limited resolution limited uh, power but I still think we can do a lot of cool stuff with it on the router the 3d printer continues to work excellent um, the wall spot that is uh, the other night I let it print out 15 of my USB charger housings and came back in the morning and they were all done no mistakes no issues so I trust this thing a lot and a whole lot more than I trusted the uh, uh, the solid doodle 3 I am still gonna finish redoing the solid doodle 3 so I have both three printers but for now this one is is working like a champ. And finally, speaking of USB chargers, it, this is a good feeling to have 15 of them laying here on the bench, finished, ready to ship. So if you're interested in a USB charger, uh, head over to CrippleConcepts.com and place your order. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next